Thanks a lot. I will uh, speak about PG Metadata, which uh, is a QGIS plugin to manage metadata inside your PostgreSQL database. Um, so, um, what is metadata? Uh, quick, uh, quick reminder: it's to help people to understand your data. Like, if you're a creator, uh, you need to tell them uh, what is your data. So, you have a title, an abstract. You can have categories. Keywords, you can put in the metadata yes, the spatial properties of the of the layer of the data. You can help to to know when the data has been created, modified. What is the license? Uh, how many features you have in your data? So it's a full identification card of your data, and it's very important if you need to share your data, and even more important if your data changes a lot. Uh, throughout time uh, to know if it's still valid or not. So it's uh, on, on the right you have a, a small uh, representation and uh, the data set, uh, contacts and links uh, for your data. It's a very simple model. Um, uh, PG Metadata was designed for people using PostgreSQL uh, to store their vector and raster data. Um, why? Because we think PostgreSQL is a, a great tool, um, and you have your data centralized in the same place. So if you have the metadata with your data, that's, that's great. Um, it's very accessible. You only need a PostgreSQL connection to access your metadata, not a, a third-party tool. Um, you can benefit PostgreSQL-rich features like uh, relations, constraints, uh, triggers, views. So you can use the logic of PostgreSQL to help create or update your metadata. Um, you can also use write and access controls. Who can edit, who can read the, the, the metadata. And obviously you have many clients. You can use QGIS, you can use PG Admin, you can use command line PSQL tool to see the data in PostgreSQL, so your metadata too. And it's very easy to backup and restore your metadata. You just backup and restore your PostgreSQL database. So I will present three ways of using PG metadata as uh, the GIS administrator, as the GIS user, and uh, uh, another one. So first you need to, as the admin, you need to create in your database the schema called PG metadata, which will store uh, the needed tables and views and relations and functions we crea created in this tool. So there is a, we always in 3 use, we always, we, we like to use QGS processing algorithm because you can use that from the processing toolbox or the plugin can do that for you. But it's a centralized way of having, uh, of creating data or uh, doing some processing. So you can use this algorithm and it will install the schema inside your PostgreSQL database or databases. Then uh, you can create with another tool, another processing tool, uh, a QGIS project aiming to edit your metadata. Because QGIS is a PostgreSQL client it has very rich uh, forms, very rich way of uh, managing relations between data. You can use a QGIS project with no special layer only to edit your metadata. So for example, uh, here you, in this project, you can edit uh, the themes. If you need one more themes like environment and climate or other, you can add contacts. It's just a layer with attributes, and you can have forms to edit that with uh, controls, checks, expressions. Um, so you prepare editing. You can also add translations in the, if needed. And then you can use just a yeah, classical QGIS form to edit your data set. For example, the tree layer uh, in this demo schema. And you have the main field, like title, abstract, keywords. And you, you can use the QGIS uh, checkboxes. You can use uh, the combo boxes to choose, for example, the publication frequency. It's very handy to use QGIS 
as a, an editing tool for PostgreSQL layers. So you edit your metadata for, for example, for the tree table, and um, then there are some uh, logic under, and uh, some data are calculated from the table content. For example, the, there is a valid unique ID for the data set. We can compute the layer extent, the number of features, the geometry type, the projection ID and name. So PostgreSQL gives us, which triggers the capability to do that. And uh, we have also created useful views to know the orphan PostgreSQL tables, which tables in your database do not have metadata. The opposite, orphan metadata, which uh, sometimes you, have, you had edited uh, metadata for a, a table, but you have then dropped the table, so you can see that. And we also manage some flat representations of the data sets, for example, to export as a CSV to view that in LibreOffice or Excel. So that was for the admin guy, the, the guy editing the metadata. Now, uh, for the GIS user, um, so that was supposed to be an animated GIF that you will have the, the link here. And uh, basically you can search with the control K in QGIS, you can search uh, inside the title or the description or comments and you can find your, uh, your lines of metadata. For example, here I typed meta tree and I find the trees. And when I click, when I enter, I will have the layer popping up in QGIS and uh, a small doc panel on the right side with all the metadata you, write, you wrote down before. So as a user, I can fi easily find some layers in the PostgreSQL database I can connect to, and then have the metadata uh, just visible when you click on the layer in the QGIS layer tree. The user can also export the metadata in different format, HTML, PDF, and also DCAT, which is a standard. Uh, it's a vocabulary, it's a way of uh, writing the metadata in XML, and so you can use that to import uh, in other tools if needed. Um, the, the third part of the presentation was the PG metadata advanced features. Um, because it's um, SQL-like and data-driven uh, developed, you can easily change how metadata will show uh, the the metadata uh, yeah, I, text representation, the layout. You can change this layout we've seen in the right doc. Uh, inside the HTML templates table is just a table with values. You can change and uh, write down how you want to organize your metadata. We provided one default one, but you can change it easily. Um, and we have some SQL functions to, uh, for example, generate an uh, HTML card with SQL. So select PG metadata, get data set item HTML, you give the schema and the layer a table and the localization. In FR means French, you can have in English or other um, compatible um, language. And you can, you, we have also created some uh, functions to export as DCAT, um, for example. And as an admin administrator in the big companies, you can also deploy QGIS with some uh, already um, chosen configuration. For example, if uh, the, the connections, uh, the name of the connections to the PostgreSQL database where the control K, where the QGIS search tool can use, and uh, if the, you want to open automatically the doc or not. There are some configuration available here. We have also, um, in 3 we have also a, a tool created which is Lismap Web Client. You can publish QGIS projects online in a web browser. And so we have also created a model for that. So you can click on the layer in uh, the, the layer tree, the web uh, layer tree, and you have the same um, card uh, because it's just select, give me the card, 
and uh, we use that in LISMAP2 to display the metadata of a specific layer. Um, and um, we have also, uh, yeah, we, we have tried to have a, a full or rich documentation for different uh, usage, for the administrator, for the end user, for the system administrators. So you can go to docs.3list.org uh, and see uh, the, the full documentation with the yeah, different uh, parts. Um, as a conclusion, uh, I, will, I will try to, yeah, to answer the, the questions. Um, why another metadata tool? Uh, there are plenty uh, of metadata tools, server-side, applications, client-side, and um, why PG metadata? First answer, uh, see the previous slide about PostgreSQL. It's centralized, it's very easy to access. You don't need to install another application. You have your database and data is in the same place. That's, I think, the main, uh, yeah, the, the main thing with that. You keep the metadata as close as possible to the data, and you don't have to install a new application and to maintain a new application. So you just can focus on maintaining your PostgreSQL database, and that's okay. And the GIS users, they won't need to uh, find your data inside a web uh, application. They just brought that in QGIS. So they are in their tool, G QGIS, and they'll just search the data and open it. It's not, it's just user oriented. It means you, yeah, it's inside QGA that you use PG metadata, um, not the other way around. And it was not designed to replace the existing metadata web portals, which provide a lot of rich features uh, for sharing and for uh, importing, exporting. Um, we have some capability to, to be harvested. Uh, if you use Lismap and the modules, it can, you, there is a link you can harvest in DCAT the metadata. So other tools like uh, national uh, open data portal can harvest uh, the data inside PG metadata, but you need Lismap web client and the module, which are open source. Um, the roadmap, we will uh, release a new version. Uh, I, I hoped to release one just before today, but uh, we... <laughs> We did not manage it, but in September uh, we will uh, have uh, a license. It's JPL uh, 2.0, but uh, we just forgot to add one. We will raise the QGS minimum version to 3.16. It will have a raster support, better handling of backslashes in the links, new fields to, um, for the contact, for the license, and other, uh, other things. And we would like to improve the import-export tools to facilitate the, yeah, the format, the data exchange between different uh, softwares. Some resources uh, you will have in the presentation. And I would like to thank uh, the French Guard Province for funding and uh, my colleague here, Etienne Trimay, which is maintaining and has developed a lot of, of things. I've done the PostgreSQL part, uh, is the, the responsible of the Python uh, QGS uh, plugin part. And also many thanks to our external active contributors. Uh, we have one very, very active, Florian Yen, uh, for ideas, he provided fixes, improvements, and uh, we have unknown but kind translators uh, for Finnish, German, Spanish, and your, if you want us to to help you, you can contribute uh, for uh, other translation. Thanks a lot for your attention, and uh, if you have questions, and I would love to hear feedback from users, because I know there are some, but I have never have feedback, so <laughs> feel free. Thank you.